Hey there guys and welcome to this episode of Ask Gearist. My name is Brandon from Gearist.com. If you've got a question for us, please feel free to email us at info at Gearist.com or just leave a comment in the comments section down below. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Feel free to ask questions in any of those places and we'd be happy to get your question up on the air. Today's question comes to us from Ross G. Ross says, Hi from Cape Town, South Africa. Please, can you share some of your key thoughts around transitioning from normal 12 millimeter drop road shoes and running A6 Nimbus to more minimalist 4 millimeter zero drop shoes, give or take, for off road trail running, i.e., the 980 trail from New Balance? Are there any key strengthening training tips to avoid injury in the transition process? Thanks a ton. Ever since the minimalist running movement has kind of started and basically getting into more of a natural posture, this is a question that a lot of people have. What I mean by natural posture is that when we stand on a flat surface with a bare foot, like you can see here, the difference in height from the heel to the forefoot, the metatarsal heads, is zero. There is no difference. They're on the same plane, assuming you're on a flat surface and not like an angled surface. Now, when we get into a traditional running shoe, it's about 12 millimeters of difference from the heel to the forefoot. But as we move into this more minimalistic type of running shoe phase right now, everybody's getting away from that. And the industry standard has kind of shifted from 12 millimeters down to about 8 millimeters, give or take. And most people are trying to at least build one or two of their models that are anywhere from zero millimeters up to six. Now we're not going to get too much into the actual shoe talk today, but let's just talk about transitioning your body. What you have to worry about when going from a high drop shoe to a low drop shoe is the fact that all your shoes are high drop, whether that's a high heeled shoe that you might wear to an office or something like that, a loafer, a work boot, all these things have a relatively high drop. The problem is that over time, since you were a kid, the posterior of your lower leg, in other words, your Achilles, your, your calf muscle group, all those muscles and connective tissues shorten over time because you've been in this high drop shoe. So the pain that someone feels when going from a high drop or traditionally drop shoe to a low drop shoe is pain that is related to lengthening or elongating of those muscles and connective tissues of the shoe. Excuse me, of those muscles and connective tissues of the posterior of the lower leg. A lot of people think their muscles are sore simply from running more on their forefoot. And while that may be the case a tiny bit, that's not really where that key transition area comes from. It's going to be from lengthening those muscles and tissues. Issues. Now a few quick tips about that transitioning. Now a few people go in and they're like, well I'm only going to go this far or this much time in my new running gait or my new running shoes. The first thing that you need to know is never base any sort of running plan or transition plan around distance. Why? Well because one day you might run a nine minute mile, the next day you might run a seven minute mile. And the difference is that you're going to be running for a lot longer if you're going for eight, excuse me, a nine minute mile over the course of let's say 20 minutes than you would be if you're going for a seven minute mile over the course of 20 minutes. So always base your transition times whether this is upping your fitness or your endurance level or whether it's transitioning from a high drop shoe to a low drop shoe, always base it around time. The biggest reason, because 20 minutes is 20 minutes is 20 minutes. Now in terms of actually transitioning, there are a couple ways you can go about it. The first and what I recommend typically is going out in your new shoes for about 20 minutes the first time you're out, okay? At 20 minutes, take it nice and easy, nothing fast, and then either loop back to your house or wherever you are, pick up your shoes that you've been in, and then use those shoes to fill out the remainder of your run. From that point, what you're going to want to do is basically go up by about five minutes every time you run, if you can. Now, if you feel yourself getting a little sensitive or really touchy, just stay where you are. The whole point is that you want to start listening to your body because that's a very important aspect of running. Now, on trails, it's a little bit different because a lot of trail running, you spend time on that forefoot. You spend time way far forward because it's more agile and your knees have to be softer and things like that. This is actually a great idea. There's not a whole lot of transition uh, difference between road and trail, but the entire thing is making sure that your heel is allowed to settle to the ground. A lot of people transition from one shoe to the next, a high drop shoe to a low drop shoe, and they assume they need to be way up on that forefoot. But guess what? That is a sprinter's stance. That is not a regular endurance runner's gait. So what you want to be sure of is that your entire foot is landing on the ground. And more importantly, you want to be sure that it's landing under your center of gravity or as close to it as you can. A lot of people make the mistake of landing on that forefoot and still landing way out in front of their body like this 
Overstriding is overstriding whether it's on your heel or your forefoot. So please don't get caught up in the rhetoric of forefoot landing versus heel strike and all this kind of stuff. The quickest and easiest way to find out exactly how your foot, your foot, not my foot, not that guy's foot, not my dog's foot, is to go out and bear with me for a second, take your shoes and socks off, find a nice smooth piece of asphalt or concrete, not grass, not dirt, not sand. You need something hard and smooth and flat. Find a nice piece of concrete or asphalt that's nice and smooth, go barefoot. No socks, no nothing. Yes, I realize it may be winter or cold where you are. However, just find some place and go out and do a two minute run. And what you'll realize is that your brain will tell your feet exactly how to land. Then you can take that and translate that into your shoes. Now more toward Ross's question, you know, there is no tried and true like in stone method for this is exactly how everyone transitions. A lot of it is about being smart and really upping it incrementally. If you want to be really, really deliberate about it, what I would do is go 20 minutes on your first run. Let's say you run four days a week. 20 minutes, the next day go 22 and a half minutes, the next day go 25 minutes, the next day go 27 and a half, and really ramp it up very, very slowly, keeping in mind that those muscles and connective tissues need time to elongate. Thank you so much for the question, Ross, and if we didn't answer your question fully, please let us know in the comments below of this video. If any of you guys have any questions, as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, please feel free to email us, info at gearist.com, find us on Twitter and Instagram, which is at the Gearist, or Facebook com slash gearist. Also, feel free to just leave a comment or question right here in the comments section below of this video. Now, we started out making this a one episode per week series, but we can see that you guys have a lot of questions, so we're going to ramp it up to probably two, maybe three a week for now, and we'll see how quickly we can crank those out. So if you've asked a question, have patience. We will get to it as soon as we can. As always, please follow us over here on all our social networks and visit Gearist.com. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love you to check out our site. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like and favorite this video, and we'll see you next time.